Aloha my kako, a como mata curtain call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artist on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. This past weekend, Seabury Hall celebrated the 10th anniversary of the Aalihi Kuhonoa Creative Arts Center. At that time, I said, quote, the new $7 million Aalihi Kuhonoa Creative Arts Center is as exciting and important an improvement in the performing arts on Maui as the Maui Arts and Cultural Center was, unquote. Paradee Erdman and his late wife Betsy, who had been patrons of Seabury since it opened in 1964, had the vision and resources to bring this state-of-the-art creative arts center into being. Designed by Flansburg Architects of Boston, who also designed the upper school building, it features a flexible theater that can seat up to 500, a 2,000 square foot dance studio and dressing rooms, a main lobby equipped with museum strips, which enable it to become a gallery to display student, faculty, and visiting artists' work. Also, there is a refreshment slash snack bar. The celebration kicked off on Friday with the pre-show VIP reception featuring world-class poo-poo prepared by chef David Vellante and the Seabury Hall culinary team, bravissimo. It also had wonderful entertainment from the Seabury Hall Hawaiian Ensemble under the direction of Kamale Kava'a, professional harpist singer Molly Balkum, 93, a percussion piece directed by Peter Della Croce, a wonderful duet of the Edith Piaf Chestnut La Vie en Rose, sung in English by Amelia Couture, O2, and en Francais by Ms. Balkum. Then there was a flash mob under the direction of David Ward, who we learned is celebrating his 34th year with Seabury, and then the upper school chorus serenaded the audience as they entered the theater under the direction of John Rawl, with Mr. Della Croce playing Jimbe to Bonk Abba Fandel. Welcome song. Upon entering the theater, there was a video collage of alums, faculty, and current students waxing poetic about the CAC their present lives and future plans by Filippi Lippi, the show's videographer. Then we got a preview of Seabury's first show this year, Adam's Family the Musical. They did the opening number, When You're an Adams, with Christian Lloyd Roque as Gomez Adams and Bobby Golden as Morticia. If they can do that well with just two weeks of rehearsal, I cannot wait to see the full show. There are some Broadway quality pipes in this cast. At the opening of the CAC in 2012, the show was a nostalgic look back at the distinguished alumni. But this show was a blend of the new and the past, as its title, Past Forward, inferred. Each of the alumni held forth on several numbers. Let's begin with Rachel E. Berman, class of 07, who has made a life for herself in TV commercials on both sides of the camera. She started in a sexy sequined red dress and sang and danced her heart out I'm back on bass from Closer Than Ever. She has a terrific belt and a very nice chest soprano, but it was her scat singing that stood out the most for me. She created a timbre that sounded just like a trumpet. She then showed her versatility as she became the mother in the Into the Woods medley and sang No One Is Alone. She closed out her section of the show with a rousing song and dance number, Cole Porter's Take Me Back to Manhattan, that featured terrific vintage dance complete with rockette style kick line. The audience loved it. New York jazz composer Isaac Ross, who attended Seabury in 85 and 86, has become a writing partner with another 86 Seabury alum, my stepdaughter, Juliet Green. He performed a song they did together at the opening of the CAC 10 years ago, Constant Blue. I'm prejudiced, but it is a wonderful song. His voice is comforting and exciting at once, and his manner is decidedly un-New York, but his talent belongs in the Big Apple. The high point of the show for Mr. Ross was his three-penny opera medley. He launched into the Kurt Weill masterpiece with virtuosic playing on the tango ballad. Then came the most well-known song in the show, thanks to Bobby Darren, Mac the Knife. Here he was joined by Amelia Nelson O2. Couture. She came on in a stunning colorful sequin number and did the song with clarity, purpose, and the repartee with Mr. Ross brought depth and humor to the performance. Mrs. Couture, 
who was one of the founders of Adaptations Dance Theater, has gone on to the study of the art of rope and fabric dance. She performed a breathtaking piece entitled A Thing with Feathers, choreographed by she and Heather Booth to Parse Mihi Domine, performed by the Hildegard Ensemble with music editing by Toby Couture. This work was so beautiful, and Ms. Couture is so accomplished in this form, it appeared as if she was performing each move effortlessly, and yet one could see how strenuous and difficult this form is to pull off. It was as if the rope were her partner, and she was performing a pas de deux with the rope, not with another dancer. There were several thrilling points in the routine where Mrs. Couture allowed herself to free fall. The poses she did 20 feet in the air redefined beauty. It's one of those, you had to be there, because this piece defies description. Ms. Balcom, who was with us for the opening of the CAC, is a lover of Shakespeare and did two songs using speeches from the bard. The first was Blow, Blow, Thou Winds, Blow from As You Like It, and the next was You Spotted Snakes from A Midsummer Night's Dream. She is an expert professional. On her next number, By My Side from Godspell, she was joined by Tulip Hori and Harmony Powers and the Seabury Ballet Four choreographed by Vanessa Cerrito, demonstrated the beauty and grace of this form while the three women harmonized. Finally, Ms. Balcom joined Ms. Berman, Master Roke, and Ms. Gurley, along with the upper school choir as the witch in Children Will Listen in the finale of the Into the Woods medley. John Benden, class of 96, played Moonface Martin in the production they did of Anything Goes, and Gabe Frampton was Billy. They showed the video of that production, the scene where they sing Be Like a Bluebird, and they stopped it in the middle of a speech by Billy, raised the screen, and revealed Mr. Benden's son Jack, class of 25, as Billy, and he and his dad did the rest of the scene and the song together. It was a moment where the past, present, and future were all in one place for everyone to enjoy. The audience went nuts for this scene. Juliet Green, 86, was unable to attend due to her teaching obligation back on the mainland, but she submitted a video and recorded a song written by the former Seabury music teacher Mark Kennedy called My Sons and Daughters with choreography by Taya German, David Ward, and the dancers, Luz Bridgeford, Jaden Gurley, Maya Motley, and Emma Wasson. Ms. Green is a consummate professional singer in the Bay Area with perfect pitch who specializes in a cappella and vocalese. I want that recording. Mr. Ward has been training dancers at Seabury for more than three decades. Several of them have gone on to professional careers besides Mrs. Couture. Noelani Neal, 12, is currently working in Cats and couldn't come. Rachel I. Berman, 07, worked in New York and with choreographers such as Donald McIntyre, Cheryl Mickelson, and the legendary Third Rail Project, and Kelsey Greenway, 12, is a professional in New York, to name a few. This year's ensemble might be one of the best. Their performance of Shifting Winds by Rising Appalachia had wonderful movement, photogenic poses, and athletic partnering. I wish they could get some men into dance. The Kumo of Seabury four-time Nahoko Anohano Award winner and Grammy-nominated artist Kamale Kava'a did Pau Kukalo. It is in Wailuku, where Kumu Kava'a grew up and resides. He was joined by Jasmine Gorman for a solo hula, which brought out all of the nuance of the song. The Maunalei Music Ensemble, under the direction of Peter Delacroce, opened the second act after an intermission of scrumptious desserts with Over the Rainbow. The upper school chorus under Mr. Rawls' direction did sing, and not to be outdone, Marsha Kelly's Thespians performed thoughtful monologues from the Book of Qualities by J. Ruth Gendler. Paul Wood, the longtime Maui writer, started the performing arts department when he was an English teacher back in 1988. He actually hired David Ward. He was honored by head of the school, Maureen Madden. Finally, Ms. Madden, announced a $20,000 college scholarship in the name of the late Betsy Erdman to the student who demonstrates the qualities that Mrs. Erdman stood for her entire life. It's hard to believe that such quality work could be produced in one full rehearsal with everyone and in two weeks by the Seabury students. I hope I am around for the 20th anniversary. 
ProArts is presenting Nassim Suleimanpour's revolutionary, groundbreaking theatrical experience, White Rabbit, Red Rabbit. There is no director, no rehearsal, and a different actor for each performance. I saw Francis Tawa. It was gut-busting funny, heartbreaking, poignant, devastating, refreshing, and thoroughly satisfying. When you see it, your reaction will depend on who is doing it. Choose your actor or actors and have fun. It runs till October 9th. Go to ProArtsMaui.com for tickets and information. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo Nui Loa for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho! My sons and daughters, stop these anxious years. Feel tears that yet will.